Jonathan, normally when we talk about the mind and art, we're looking to explain the art and how the mind works to understand the art, appreciate the art, create the art. Um, we like to flip that around. Given the art and the fact that we appreciate it, what does that tell us about the mind, about, about human consciousness, human awareness, etc.? As a composer, uh, as you write, how does what you write in music, because you know it's going to have some kind of, a, uh, of an affect, tell us something about the mind? So music is a, is a set of puzzles in time, right? Where it's about patterns. Um, it's, about, it's about distorting patterns. It's about stretching them out or compressing them. It's about changing their directions. Um, and I think that um, being able to trace in a non-narrative context, and, and, and again, what's unique about music is its, its inherent abstraction. And so that we can take a listener and point them in a direction and then suddenly change it um, is sort of a unique factor about music. And I think it tells us an awful lot about, um, about pr temporal processing, about how we segment time, mm. how we put together contexts and how we build contexts how we, um, how we can imagine new contexts. Um, I'll play you an example from a string quartet I wrote years ago called Doubles. And this is just a, a small 40 second example where if you follow the narrative of the piece harmonically, it goes to a place and then it takes a wrong turn. Mm -hmm. And then it takes a wrong turn again. Um, a trick that I learned from Schubert, although I do it in a very different uh -huh. context. So here you have um, a harmonic path that's, that's pivoting mm -hmm. uh, to a different harmonic world by using some common features in one and making it the source of another, right? Now, again, this is a, a trick that Schubert did often. Um, and, and here I do it three times in a very short period of time. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating to think about music um, taking a step back because in a sense, music only exists in this present time and philosophers argue what is the present time is it a microsecond a millisecond is it two seconds do we have a floating memory i mean it's, it's almost impossible mm -hmm. to, to answer but that's how music works we we have a memory of what we heard and we think we have something in the present and we we predict where it may go <laughs> and it's it, it's very different than any other kind of artwork oh absolutely yeah i we're, we're you know it's a it's it's um it's a constant catch-up game of right. anticipating what's going to happen and then comparing what you thought would happen to what right. does happen and then readjusting. And that, that process of, of readjustment, I, you know, I think that um, one, one can ask if there's, um, if there's a, a function of music beyond the artistic purpose in itself. And I think that one of those functions, this is something that um, Marvin Minsky argued many years uh, ago. Marvin's a great friend of most of the truth. So Marvin wrote, Marvin was a, a good friend of mine too. Oh, wow. Um, he, wrote, he wrote a paper on music about 30 years ago, which I found very inspiring. And, and his question was, um, why, do I, why, why does he listen to Beethoven's ninth, Beethoven's fifth, the opening of Beethoven's fifth? again and again and again and again, mm -hmm. and it'll compare performances. And he says, you know, when you look at it um, objectively, it's ba da da dam ba da da dam ba da da dam ba da da dam ba da dam And if you count the number of da 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 dams it goes into the hundreds, if not the thousands. Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense that an intelligent human being would enjoy that, let alone <laughs> listen to that it again That sounds like again. Marvin, you're channeling Yeah, him. and so, um, so his interpretation was very beautiful. He said, um, Children learn about space by playing with blocks. They, they build blocks and mm -hmm. they knock them down, and that's how they get spatial 
we have no way of learning about time except by segmenting them. And so for, for Marvin's interpretation of why we like da 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 is because it gives us the segmentation of time that then Beethoven plays with and distorts. And that that's um, sort of the primary f utilitarian function of music. Hmm. Um, so I think that this is a takeoff on that. And, I, and that, that, that strongly influenced me in all of the research work that I've done on music.